Welcome back to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're looking at a second conversation as the issue of inflation for Nigeria. Nigeria's inflation rate changed direction in February as it rose to 15.70% from 15.6% recorded in the previous month. And this represents a 0.1% point increase compared to the rate recorded in January 2022. Now, this is according to the Consumer Price Index report released by the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS. The Consumer Price Index rose by 15.70% on year-on-year on from 366.8 index points recorded in February 2021 to 424.4 points in February 2022. On month-on-month -month basis, the headline index increased to 1.63% in February 2022, which is 0.16% rate higher than the rate recorded in January 2022. Uh, that's 1.47%. The urban inflation rate increased to 16.25%, which is part of the highlight that's in February 2022, from 17.92% recorded in February 2021, while the rural inflation rate increased to 15.18% in February 2022, from 16.77% in February 2021. Now, core inflation also rose to its highest level over four years at 14.01%, while food inflation dropped to 17. A 11% in the review period from 17.13% recorded in January 2022. Uh, the question is, what does this mean to Nigerians and her economy? We do have a guest joining the conversation. Kenny Fair is uh, a developmental economist and lead consultant to ECOWAS Commission. Uh, Kenny Fair, it's good to have you join us this morning. Well, thank you for having me. So, so the question with all of the statistics that we see sounds very technical and a common Nigerian might just be, or an average Nigerian might just be grappling uh, with those statistics and trying to understand how this affects them and their business and what this means for the Nigerian economy. Can you please tell us uh, what all of this mean for the Nigerian economy? 15.70%. The, there are five components of some inflation figures. You have the, the CPI, which is the average composite price index. You call that headline inflation. That's the figure that keeps banded all over the world. Then you have the core inflation. Now, the core inflation is all indices minus food sub-basket index. Now, that's a very important index because it tells you the status of the general rise of all prices across the spectrum. Now, food sub-basket index is the third one. And that has been the principle that has been driving our inflation figures. So we all got concerned when in December it went up. It went up and the reason was because of the consumption of food during the Christmas and people consume more than the average. So we had a small uptick, but as soon as that was over, it came down in January. And then in February, we had a different reason other than food for it to rise. And I'm come to that in a minute. Now the, the, the fourth and fifth one are the urban inflation sub-index and the rural inflation sub-index. They all tend to indicate what is going on in the rural area and in the urban areas. And where is the theater of inflation? Now, what has happened in, in January was that there was no longer the pressure on food. So the inflation came down. So if you look at the food sub-index, it was coming down and it's still coming down. But we would have had a, a bigger drop in inflation, but for the petrol, what happened in petrol last month? The, the, the adulterated petrol that was brought in now caused massive queues, which is still going on in, all over the country. And that queue means that the traders and then the transporters are having to pay more for fuel, waste more time with buying fuel, buying fuel on the road at a higher, much higher cost, double the cost. And then that has not only a, an effect. If you look at the inflation figures, that is the actual items. You see that the, the price of the fuel, solid fuel, gas, everything connected to fuel, their price went up significantly. 
And then the knock-on effect was that the prices of transportation had to go up. The food that was carried by transportation was also somewhat affected, the one that are marketed it. So everything that depends, even power, everything that depended on electricity, like gas, electricity charge, all of them went up. The, the, telling you just how fundamental that petrol issue has been. And you know what happens in Nigeria. When there's a small thing, it is, is you, know, you, you have a multiplier effect. So what you have seen, the opti optic you saw now, is purely because of the impact of the petrol uh, shenanigan. That is, the, that is the only reason. All other factors have been kept constant. So the general price you saw is just because of that petrol. If you look at the food sub battery, which has been driving inflation for the last two, three years, that is still going down. The figure is only is also gone down. All other indices went up. And they all went up because the derivatives of petrol and whatever petrol affects has gone up. They've responded. I mean, I mean, so with the fact that we're having that, you know, inflation rate, if you look at the headlines, that's what it's saying. It's increased to 15.70%. What does that mean to an average Nigerian? No, see, let me explain. There are two things. You know, when we say inflation figures, we actually use current figure against the last 12 months figure. So that is what we generally use. The moment you come into month, month, month for month, it gets very confusing because you may have an increase on month to month and then you have a decrease in month to month, whereas you actually what you are measuring is what happened 12 months ago. So I try to keep it away. You confuse everybody. The moment you go on month to month, you just confuse everybody. Because whatever happens month to month doesn't still affect the trend. The trend is, is based on what happened 12 months ago. So, so, can so that's why I don't get to that. Yeah, so the, the question here is, if one sees that inflation has increased, does it mean that the people have less power to purchase? What does that really mean? That's the question. Okay, well, the inflation, the increase in, increase in inflation shows that people are having to pay more for the same thing that they would have uh, purchased with their money. So the purchasing power of their money has gone lower, has gone down. So that's what it means. If you were able to buy, uh, if the inflation is 15, has gone up, and I was buying a basket of tomato, 1,004 last month, I may be buying it 1,005 this month. It's still the same basket of tomato. So I'm paying more for the same good. And so the money that I have is purchasing less and is, is going down you know, in relative value. Th thank you, Dr. Sefe. Uh, um, you've talked about the, the impact on, of the you know, fuel scarcity or the, the, the rise in, in, um, you know, in, in fuel costs. The petrol situation in Nigeria as being a, a factor in the increase in this uh, um, uh, consumer price index. Uh, the National Bureau of Statistics in that report, uh, the CPI report released uh, yesterday, talked about uh, what it termed the surge in energy prices. So they agree with you. But apart from the scarcity and the petrol situation in Nigeria, they also uh, fingering the ongoing crisis between Russia and Ukraine. Do, do you submit to oh, this, yeah. this, this video? Without a doubt. Without a doubt, because what has happened is that the Brent crude, which is our own oil crude, has gone up. To, it has gone to $130 per, per barrel. And it goes up and down. Of course, every day it, it goes up and down. So that, that tells you that the, the base price for the crude has gone up. Now, that would also translate to a higher price for the uh, PMS itself, because in the end of the day, the PM, the crude is bought at that high cost of, of uh, crude and then sent away. You add the transportation cost and the increased transportation cost, and they refine it abroad. You increase the cost of refining, you bring it back, you increase the cost of transportation, and the pump price is going to go up just because the money, the, the crude price is going up. Our pump price will be going up. The only way to get rid of this is for them to take refinery to start sending us fuel. And then, and then also for modular refineries to kick in or the government refineries to start so at least we can get rid of the cost of transportation and then having to pay somebody else somewhere else to refine this crude for us. And then they will load their margin on, on it. Right. That's, the, that's the only way. Okay, Otherwise, but, we are going to continue. 
Yes, but you, to be you, so you talked about, of course, the headline inflation, you talked about core inflation, you talked about the food basket, and you've also rightly pointed out that the food sub index has been going down. Uh, and and that, 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 is, that is a bit surprising and strange, sort of a paradox, you know, if you want to use that word. Why is that so? Why is the food sub index going down despite the surge in energy prices? Isn't that a paradox as far as you're concerned? No, it's the aggregate that is going down. If, because don't forget that the increase in transportation costs would have pushed up the food of price or the price of food. The increase in energy costs and processing of the food would have pushed up the price of food. But what has happened is that, yes, it would have pushed it up, but the momentum to go down was much, much higher than the increase that occasioned by those uh, food-related uh, travel things. So it could have, we have, we could have had more drop in the um, food shop basket index. Had we not had this, uh, in other words, if, if I was to guess, we probably would have had 15% inflation if we didn't have this petroleum spike because the, the momentum of food coming down was very, very high. Remember that we had the rice pyramid. These rice have all been sent out to be milled by, by millers and then pushed into the, into the system. And a lot of uh, harvest going on right now. We would have had a, a, a greater impact on food, reduc food price reduction, but for this petroleum business. Well, let's look at the fact that, I mean, it feels like, you know, seven consecutive years we've been looking mm -hmm. at almost a double digit of uh, talking about inflation. And uh, uh, that's really not good for the country. But what are your thoughts on that? Seven consecutive well, years, double digits. Well, we entered the seven years in double digit and we're probably going to leave it in, in, in still in double digit. Although there are predictions that will hit a single digit by 2025, but, but we, we, it remains to be seen. If we continue to import crude and then do all this, um, what do you call it, this subsidy, then there's no chance that we're going to meet that, that figure. But be it as it may, uh, the question is, how do I feel about seven years of continuing to be in double digit? And my answer is that I really can't see an end in sight. We, everything that can be done on food is being done by the money that is being poured in, onto the food production system by the central bank. And, uh, and everybody knows that. But in terms of other players have to up their game, you know, we want subsidy removed. Three trillion naira is going to be an additional borrowing to be able to meet this, this subsidy going on. But don't forget that this is what you are being told. You don't know what the real uh, subsidy is, uh, but that's what you are being told. So there is a lot more. If, if, if three trillion enters into development uh, calculus, it will reduce inflation. It will create more food. It will attack every sector that is putting pressure on inflation. Oh. Uh, uh, um, finally, before you go, just a very quick one. Um, let's look at the situation in Nigeria in the light of what's happening around the world. What, what's the global mood and the global reality? You know, look at countries in the West, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, Europe, UK, uh, the North America, what are they going through? Are they also experiencing something similar? Because we've seen gas prices rise in the UK, even in the US and Canada, uh, US where they're selling gallons and Canada they're selling liters. We've seen gas prices go up as well. Well, they, everybody's experiencing increases in prices for different reasons. Nigeria is experiencing it for two reasons. One, the global rise in price of crude, and then also what was going on on the adulteration of our, of our fuel, and then the impact on the exaggerated impact on the food so on the supply systems but generally globally we are going to be in for a sharp rise in the price of crude and gas because the crisis involving russia russia is the second largest producer of of uh, uh, petroleum products and and uh, also of gas supplying nearly 40 percent of the gas consumed by uh, europe so the, the fact that they are likely to shut down supply to Europe means that there's more panic around the world for them to uh, replace that, those, uh, okay. those supply. All right. All right. So, <laughs> so, so there are many more things going to happen. This is just unraveling. All right. Many so more is going to happen across the whole sectors, other sectors. So this is not just a Nigerian issue. This is a global problem. Thank you very much. It is, it is a global. Nigeria's factor enters to, to exacerbate it All right. without a doubt. All right. All right. It's been a thrill having you join us on the program this morning and always a pleasure listening to your analysis. Dr. Candy Fair is a development economist and, of course, a consultant with the ECOS Commission. Thank you for your time, sir.
Thank you. Well, there's a size of uh, the conversation right here, uh, looking at Niger's inflation. Uh, we just fingers crossed, of course, and we're hoping that the relevant quarters will step in and ensure that everything, you know, returns to normal. And uh, if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. Thanks for watching. And I'm Kofi Bertels. We'll return tomorrow with more. Keep watching Plus TV Africa and have a fantastic day.